Okay everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel today. We're back with another track guide on Gran Turismo 7 and it's a track guide for the Nations race coming up on Saturday in the Mazda Touring Car at the very, very short Alsace Village track. Now this is a new layout for GT7 so I wanted to get this guide out to try and help as many of you out as possible. I went on time trial very quickly last night at the end of the stream, did about 10 minutes on it. We didn't do many laps at all but we managed to get a reasonably solid lap in here so hopefully it will help you out and hopefully it will give you some pointers to improve your time now at the end of this video i will give you some advice on some strategy for this race because we have done a very quick run through it and it's going to be quite close so i want to talk about that with you at the end of this video so make sure if you haven't already subscribed to the channel get subscribed hit that like button and let me know in the comments if this has helped you out i do love reading them comments so let's get on with this guide improve your pace around here and yeah Let's see how it's done. So starting your lap, first things first, try and get a solid exit off this final corner there. You can actually see, I don't manage to do that. I have to give it a little lift there. So we lose half a temp, but it's not exactly, you know, the end of the world. So starting your lap, we're gonna be looking into turn one here and we're gonna break just before the curb on the left-hand side. So curb on the left-hand side there and we're on the brakes nice and early here. Now what you wanna try and do is get it rotated and get on the brakes gently and then aggressively once the car's straightened up. And what you're gonna try and do at this point is get that car rotated into this curb. You wanna actually get onto the curb. So watch P1 in the world's time here, clips the grass and that's what you wanna aim for. Look at that right front tire onto the grass and that's what we're gonna do. So onto the grass and then on that throttle and try and get on that throttle really early to carry the momentum and keep the revs going. The more revs you get out of that corner, the better your exit speed all the way up this hill. Now you're gonna rev it out to about 93 miles per hour and then change into fourth gear. And now we're looking for the next braking zone, which is just after the 50 board at the start of the curb there. I use that as a reference. The start of the curb is my reference for braking. And we're gonna try and take quite a wide line in here. So I downshift to third gear and hold third gear for quite a while. So you can see we're carrying the speed in and then downshift to second for that second bit of rotation of the car. And then we're gonna go straight back up to third gear as we put the power back down. You can see the throttle input starting to go back in. Now this corner is, you have to be patient on the throttle. You can't just be ultra aggressive because you'll understeer. And you can see there, at this point here, we're trying to line that car up and you can actually take quite a bit of the curb off on the left-hand side because you want to straight line this as much as possible. So left-hand tire onto that bit there and try and get the middle of your car over the curb. So that's what we're aiming for. If you clip the left-hand tire onto that curb too much, you're going to fling the car off and you'll be in that barrier. So remember that, try and get that car exit as good as possible. All the way now into this final corner. This corner is all about carrying momentum. So as we're going through here, you're going to break just about at the start of them I think the hay barrels or something like that where the markers are. That's what you use as a reference. You see onto the brake, you can just about see my braking inputs going in here. Now you're not gonna put much braking input in. It's gonna be just a tiny bit of braking input just to help with rotation and to get the weight on the front of the car. Now we're gonna hold fourth gear and then start putting that throttle back in once we feel the grip building and we can feel the car rotating into the apex. And now you really wanna get this car to skim the apex at the end of the corner here because if you don't do that, you're under steering wide and that'll give you the ability to put your foot down maximum all the way to the finishing line, which you can do quite easy now. Take the shortest line possible to the finishing line. So get your left-hand tire onto that curb and keep the car to the left for your actual qualifying left. So you can see I'm not gonna run all the way to the right-hand side. We're gonna keep it to the left for the shortest line to the finishing line. And yeah, hopefully that'll help you out. Now, when it comes to the race for this combination, there are a few things different. But first, let's watch this lap again from the chase camera. So you can see now, look at the right front tire on the grass there. That is so important to your lap time. I figured this out when watching the P1's time. It really does make a difference. You gain about a tenth at least by doing that. Now, this corner, you, let, you can see again that I use second gear for rotation. So I hold the third gear, then second gear for that extra bite of rotation, then back up to third gear and just try and keep that car smooth. And again, you can see middle of the car right over that curb. And then remember, if you don't get that right, you're gonna end up in the barrier. So be cautious on that corner. And again, this one, using them hay barrels, I think they are there as a reference for the braking, keeping the car quite narrow. I don't like going up high on this corner. I prefer to keep it narrow. And you'll actually find the grip builds up at the end of the corner there. So you actually get a bit of confidence when you put your foot down. And then you can see, yeah, overline 50.1. I think it's in the top 50 at the moment, but yeah, it's a reasonably decent lap. Now, when it comes to the race strategy for this race, you're gonna have to factor in a few things here, whether you feel confident with tire wear or whether you feel confident with the hard tires, because from the testing we've done, the one stop and the two stop are very, very, very close, depending on how confident and how fast you can get your pace out of them hard tires. So if you're going to do a one stop, you're gonna to have to be pretty good at saving tires. So factor this in with your decision. And 
remember that if you do do a one stop, you're going to possibly get a lot less traffic. So there is pluses and negatives to each of these. So one stop equals you can have to get them tires to around lap 12 minimum on the first stint or softs and then do the eight laps on the hard tire. That's going to save you a lot of time in the fact that you're not going to have to pit again. However, them hard tires are quite a bit slower than the soft tires. But if you can find pace on them, the one stop, I believe, can work. And I think some of the top rated drivers will probably go with the one stop because I think it might be a tiny bit quicker if you can master it. Now, if you're going to go with the two stop, you're going to have problems with traffic possibly of the people doing the one stop. So this is a better strategy for people that suffer with tire wear and might not be as confident with the hard tire because you can actually gain quite a bit with the soft tire again. And it's not that much difference between the soft and the hard, like the one stop versus the two stop. So it's all down to personal preference. I think it's going to be very situational, depending on traffic, what's going on in your race. But factor that in, you know, if you're not very good on tyres, maybe go for the two stop doing probably nine laps on the soft, then 10 laps on softs, and then one lap on hard. Or you could, if you qualify at the back, do the one lap on the hard, then do your nine stint, and then your 10 stint at the end when the fuel's a bit lighter. So hopefully this info will help you out. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if it has. I'll see you for more videos and live streams. Thanks again for watching, everyone.